Hey everybody, KJ here. Today I'm really excited to show you guys the process of astro modifying a Canon DSLR. This is my Canon Rebel T3i. I bought this a long time ago. I've been thinking about astro modifying it for the longest time, but I am not a computer engineer. I do not tear apart electronics often at all. And I was super nervous to do this, but I have to say it went really well and I've already imaged with it. It turned out great. I haven't been able to image in Nebula with it, but um, everything went well and I filmed it all so you guys can see what the process is. If you guys have any questions or needed help, you guys can follow along with the video if you need. Um, I'm gonna try to condense it as much as I can because this video is already gonna be kind of long, so uh, it's gonna be pretty quick. If it's fast, I apologize. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I will help answer to whatever I can. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna need a couple tools for the job, some Tupperware. You're also gonna want a triple aught Phillips head and a T7 bit. These are the only screws that you're gonna need to take apart the entire camera, including the sensor. You're also gonna want some of these jeweler screwdriver sets. These are good for getting those lift off connectors open. You're gonna want a razor knife, some toothpicks. These help get ribbon cables out. Nitrile gloves for when you get inside the camera. You don't want to get any of your grease down there. A fine tip sharpie, tape, a screw sheet. I got this from Gary Honus's website. This is for the 550D. This is where you're going to put all your screws and tape them down. You're going to want to do that so you don't lose any of these tiny screws. Trust me. And then you're going to want a filtered blower. This is a rocket blower. These are great. You can get them at any camera shop, but they're filtered. So you're not going to be blowing dust into the sensor if you have to clean it. And that's going to be a crucial thing. And last but not least, the Canon T3i. Like I said, I got this, uh, I think in 2011 or 2012. These were the bee's knees back in the day and it helped me through film school. I've done paid gigs with it. It's awesome. But anyways, let's get into this here. The first thing you're gonna need to do is take out these two screws on the eye cup. It's under the eye cup, so you'll have to take off that first. Pretty simple, it's Phillips head for all of the screws on the outside of the camera. The only time you're going to need the Torx bit is uh, when you get into the sensor assembly. So every one of these is a Phillips head. There's four of them on the bottom as well. There's a long screw, two medium screws or two short screws and one medium screw, I think. Um, either way, make sure you know where you're, which one you're taking out and where to put them back in so you put them in the right way. Then on the uh, input output side, you've got four screws. They're all Phillips head once again. Now onto the grip side, there's gonna be two screws, and this is pretty self-explanatory as well. These are Phillips heads. Um, once you get this off, there's only two more, I believe, and those are on top of the camera. And the location of these screws is where the straps are, so they're hiding under the little strap hook. Uh, once you get those two off, I'm pretty sure that's all of the screws on the exterior, and you can start trying to pry it off. You just get your fingernails in there, and you can usually get it off. Um, there are gonna be two wires holding this back plate together for the LCD. So make sure you don't rip it off. Um, you're gonna wanna get one ribbon cable and then the other cable off, and then you can put this back into a sealed container. So I'm just using the Phillips head there to get it off, and then I'm gonna put that in the container to make sure it stays dust free. Okay, so now that we're inside the camera, I'm gonna put on nitrile gloves. I figure it's better to just have them, if you have them, put them on. Um, you wanna keep the inside of the camera as sterile as possible. So wearing nitrile gloves will help reduce on getting fingerprints and other things inside the camera that could mess with the connections. So most of this is ribbon cables on the motherboard and I use either a toothpick to get them out or just use the rubber texture of the nitrile gloves to pull them out. Here you can see I'm using a toothpick to just kinda of jostle it out. Um, and then the other type of connector you're gonna have is a lift off or flip up connector. I don't know what the actual name is of them, uh, but I just use the jeweler's screw and screwdriver and flip the connector up and then you can just pull the ribbon cable out. So that helps a lot when you're trying to get those out. Beyond that, yeah, pretty much just getting all of the connectors off and freeing up the motherboard so that you can unscrew it. It's pretty self-explanatory here as well. Just be careful to not be super um, aggressive with taking these ribbon cables off because you don't want to ruin them, obviously. 
Um, this audio cable I took off with a razor knife. And then this middle ribbon cable I just took off with my fingernail. You can get under there and pop it off just fine. So this area on the motherboard is pretty full of ribbon cables and I found that it could be a little tough getting into them if you don't take the top of the camera off. But with a little bit of finicking, you can get it just fine. I just noticed that a lot of them are really tucked under there. So be aware of that when you get to this point, you're gonna have to do a lot of messing around to get the ribbon cables off and back on when you put the motherboard on. There's something about this area. There's just a lot of ribbon cables kind of packed in and there's also some cables that are under the motherboard as well. So just be aware of that as you get to that point. So now once you have all the ribbon cables off, there's gonna be, I believe five Phillips head screws that hold the motherboard down. Um, so once you get all those off, the motherboard should be free. I did notice there was a little connector that is under the motherboard. So just be aware of that as you're trying to get it out because you don't wanna force it out. So once you get that motherboard free, make sure you put it in a sealed container so it can stay safe and dust free. All right, so now that the motherboard's off, we're gonna start with the sensor. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take off these two broadhead Phillips screws. They were on pretty tight, so just keep that in mind when you're putting the camera back together. All right, so now this part is gonna be a lot more detail-oriented. You can see that the sensor is held together by three screws, and each of these screws has black plastic shims that are next to it, and these will tell you how far up the sensor is in relation to the focal plane. So I have these toothpicks where I marked a, as a gauge strip and you can use those to kind of gauge how far you've tightened down the sensor once you get there. But now you can see I'm cutting away at the glue that's attached to these screws. They have a little dollop of glue to make sure that they don't budge. You're gonna to wanna to cut this away so we can loosen the sensor assembly. So now as a second precaution, what I'm doing is taking the fine tip Sharpie and marking the head of the screw where it is um, in relation to the structure. So I'm putting a line on the head and making sure it touches the bottom where the screw is attached as well. So that way you know when you're tightening it back down, you can use both the toothpick gauge strips or paper, whatever you want to use. Um, and so you can use both of those gauge strips and the line you can see here um, to make sure that you're putting the sensor exactly where it was when you first started taking apart the camera. This is crucial to make sure that you can get focus once you have it all together because obviously it's not going to make any difference um, if you astro modify your camera and you can't focus it. So this is a really crucial step that you want to take time on. You can see I'm really taking my time to make sure that each of these gauge strips are perfectly precise. Um, and there's two different lengths. There's one length for the two bottom screws and then there is a length for the one that's up near the eyepiece. So I made two different ones. So keep that in mind. Once you know you have all of that good to go, that's when you can untighten these screws. Now they're spring loaded, so just make sure that you keep that in mind when you're loosening them. And once you have all three of them loose, the sensor will be detached from the camera. And you can see this is the whole CMOS assembly. Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't freaking out at this point, but um, this is really where the bulk of your modifying the camera is gonna be. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're gonna be loosening the four screws that keep all of the filters sandwiched in front of the sensor. So once we have these loose, we can then take the actual bracket off and you can see there's already some dust getting on the sensor with this. So this is why having that little rocket blower is really nice. Um, and so now I'm taking the jeweler screw and I'm prying open that bracket. Um, you can see it'll just pop right out and what this is doing is it's kind of squeezing down on the sensor and the uh, filters so they don't move. So this, this filter right here with the piezoelectric element on it, this is the dust protection layer. It has other uses, I, I'm pretty sure, but um, this we want to keep. We don't want to ruin this one, so let's put this in a sealed container. So now all we have is this infrared cut filter in front of the sensor, and we can just pry it up with a flathead screwdriver, and then... It'll free itself and we have just the naked sensor and 
this was super scary to just even hold, but it's pretty cool looking. So was, that was cool to see, but make sure you put this in a sealed container um, and just be very delicate with it. Um, so this is what we're here for, this black plastic frame. We're trying to remove this blue piece of glass that's in the frame. So what we're gonna do is cut away at the glue that they put on here in each corner with the razor knife. Once you have it cut away, you can pinch the glass with your fingers and just gently start to pry it away. It should pop off. All right, so then once you have that piece of glass off of the filter frame, that is how you astro modify this camera. This is the infrared cut filter. We don't want this anymore so we can get better nebulae emissions. So we don't need that. We can toss that away. And we wanna keep this filter frame. We're gonna put this back on the sensor. So now to reassemble, we're just gonna line this back up. And then there are two screws that you wanna put on uh, on one side. The other two screws you're gonna leave because we need to sandwich all the other filter pieces back together and then we can secure it down. So now with a few squeezes of our blower, we can put this dust element back in. This will fit right into the filter frame. So once you have that, then we just wanna take the metal filter, I don't even know what to call this thing. It's just a metal piece um, that'll click right onto it. So you can see on each corner, there's a little tab and you can just push it right down, it'll secure. And then you can put the other two screws on for the filter assembly. All right, so now your imaging chip is back together and that is the most difficult nerve wracking part and the rest of it is way easier. So now we just have to put the camera back together. And the first things first, we wanna put the sensor assembly back into the shutter casing. So we wanna line it up with these screws and use those black plastic shims to align it up as well. Uh, once you have that lined up, it should sit right there and you can see it's still springy, so that's good. Um, then we just have the three screws to tighten down. All right, so now it's time to put the adjustment screws back on for the chip. Um, I'm just gonna start by tightening them in and not putting them exactly where they need to go, just making sure that they're secure. And then we're gonna use the gauges that we got and check how deep we are. Um, and this is really just taking your time, measuring twice, cutting once. Um, you wanna make sure that this is exactly in the same spot, like I said, uh, otherwise it will not achieve focus. So just make sure you're taking your time with this since we did mark off the screws and used our little depth gauges, we should have no problem here. Um, just like I said, take your time and it'll be totally fine. So at this point, it's pretty simple. We're just doing reverse order and assembling the camera again. Um, there's just gonna be a few screws to put in uh, and also there's gonna be a bunch of those ribbon cables to put back in. Like I said, up near the shutter button, there are a lot of ribbon cables, so it's gonna be a little tough um, getting all of this together. And I, did men I forgot to mention, by the way, you're gonna wanna make sure you have tweezers. Um, I found some in the middle of this and that helped me get everything put back together. So. Um, the tweezers are gonna help you get into those really tight spots, but the rest of it is super simple, man. It's just getting all the ribbon cables connected, uh, making sure that they're secure. I like to give them a little tug once I've put them in and put the lift off connector back down. I like to give it a tug to make sure that it's secure. You know, if it's, if it's there, it won't pull out super easily. So just make sure you have all of them connected because you don't wanna put the camera back together and then not have anything turn on. So. That's just a simple way to make sure that we don't have to tear this whole thing apart again, is making sure that all of those ribbon cables are perfectly secure. All right, so now once you have the motherboard all connected, it's just a matter of putting the back plate on and securing all the screws on the exterior of the camera, and then you're done. And then it's the nerve wracking moment of trying to turn it on and see if it actually works. Um, luckily for me, I was able to turn it on and you can see it works just fine. And so with that being said, we are all finished with Astro modifying the Canon T3i. 
Uh, it was super nerve wracking at first, but you know, it's pretty simple. Hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit. I know it goes really fast, so I apologize for that. But like I said, if you have any questions, please just shoot it in the comments and I will answer any question that I can. Um, this is a pretty simple procedure. It's just very intimidating. So you wanna make sure you do it right. Um, and once you do that, then you have a nice alternative to an astronomy camera. This thing uh, should shoot Nebula a lot better now. I'm hoping to get at least one clear night here soon so I can try it out, but it is galaxy season. So uh, there's not many Nebula to shoot, but either way, when summer rolls around, uh, I'm sure Cygnus is gonna be awesome, all of it. Uh, I'm just really excited and uh, I hope you guys uh, can build up the courage to maybe do this yourself. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you guys have clear skies and remember to keep looking up.